Hello my friends of Genshin Impact, my name is Tildrell and I welcome you all to a new character analysis and breakdown video where I give you advice on your future summoning plans. Today we are talking about Ayaka. Ah, and by the way, my 500 subscriber milestone celebration is still ongoing, so if you want to participate in the giveaway and everything, just check out the respective video on my channel. But now, let's analyze Kamisato Ayaka, a new sword character from the Cryo element, and she will be used solely as main DPS character and nothing else. As you can see, she gets nice help for her job with her ascension stat, which is crit damage. This means she gets a massive damage boost for free, and you don't even need the right artifacts for it. You even could concentrate a little bit more on crit rate, so you can trigger her critical hits consistently. Now we take a look at her talents, but we won't start from the top, mm -mm, I need to show you something else first. Her alternate sprint talent, the Kamisato Art Senhil, because this talent right here is the game changer. This makes her viable as main DPS. And now some of you may be asking, but Tildrill, she's just sprinting around like Mona with that talent. Why is this making her viable? What the fuck? Because this talent has a second and much more important use to it. Look here, when Ayaka reappears from the ground from her sprinting animation, she at first damages every opponent around her and applies this cryo, which isn't that important, but then she gets a cryo infusion on her blade for her basic attacks for five seconds and this is the game changer without this talent ayaka would deal mixed damage which means that you would have needed to decide for her goblet slot if you want to boost her physical damage for her auto attacks or her cryo damage for her skills generally mixed damage butchers the dps of any character. I bet you all have already experienced this weird state with Dilluk where he runs out of his infusion from his burst while still waiting for his E to come up again, yeah? Before he hits for like 30,000 damage each hit and now all of a sudden he swings around his claymore awkwardly and only deals like 2,000 damage or even lower with each auto attack. And that's mixed damage for you all. This as I said, this butchers the DPS outputs of any character you are playing. But not so with Ayaka, because of this talent, if you utilize it correctly, you can build a cryo goblet on her and every single damaging ability of her is benefiting from it. This is amazing. And I'm truly thankful that unlike Kazuya, Ayaka has this infusion mechanic on Constellation Zero and not on Constellation Six for some reason. Okay, but now let's go from top to bottom. Her auto attack talent has nothing to complain about. You could compare it to Kaching scaling, so her auto attacks will do great damage. Ayaka's E is just a better version of Kaya's E because it has a wider range and enemies hit by it or let's say small enemies hit by it will get CC'd for a short time because it knocks them back. And as you can see the damage scaling on this skill is quite good. Sadly it has a cooldown of 10 seconds which dampens the efficiency of her E quite a bit. And last but not least, we have her burst, the Kamisatsu art Sometsu, which is a cryo version of Diluc's burst in a nutshell. For real, it does the same. The only difference is that it hasn't such fancy animations and particles. I mean, Diluc's falcon on his burst strike looks amazing. And instead of carrying smaller enemies in the air at the end, the burst of Ayaka explodes when it ends. Sadly, the damage scaling of her burst isn't that good when you look at it. It's quite low and another bummer. Her burst, for some reason, although it should mirror Diluc's burst, I guess, has an energy cost of 80. Of 80! This means in some cases when you are not optimizing her build, you won't be able to recast this once the cooldown is over. This is 
quite bad, actually. I'm, I'm, I mean, she's a five star. Why didn't Mihoyo give her an energy cost of 60 or 40? Okay, let's take a look at her passives. Her first passive is just a crafting bonus, as we have seen already with Eula and the characters of this sort. Her second passive is a huge damage bonus. Because after you cast her E, her normal and charged attacks will deal 30% increased damage for 6 seconds. Looks good on paper. But when we remember the stats of her E, it has a cooldown of 10 seconds. So this passive has a downtime of 4 seconds where she will deal significantly lower damage. Her third passive is a nice little bonus, but not as strong as her second passive, in my opinion. Because once you re-emerge from the ground after you activated your sprint, and you hit an enemy, that's very important. Ayaka restores 10 stamina and she gains an 18% cryo damage bonus for 10 seconds. This is, yeah, as I said, a nice bonus, a nice cherry, but 18% damage bonus isn't really something you would notice. But hey, an 18% bonus is an 18% bonus. Then, when we look at her constellations, we realize something very important when we look at her constellation 1. Because now, whenever Ayaka deals cryo damage to an opponent with her normal and charged attacks, this attack has a 50% chance to decrease her E cooldown by 0.3 seconds. So if you're constantly auto-attacking and you are lucky, you could decrease your E cooldown so much that you have a constant buff up time from her second passive, which is the desired playstyle in my opinion. So if you want to play Ayaka and if you want to play Ayaka efficiently, let's say, um, then I would recommend you to go for Constellation 1 if you have saved up enough Primo Gems or if you have the funds to wait for Constellation 1. Yeah, as you please. The other Constellations aren't that important from my perspective because here at Constellation 2, you only summon two smaller Frost Tunnels when you activate her Burst that only deal 20% of her Burst damage. So this won't do any damage to your opponents. Ugh. This is the typical stat increase of her talents. Then here you decrease the defense of your enemies by 30%, which means physical and elemental resistance. But you are an elemental damage dealer and please, if you have a little bit of brain, you will pair Ayaka with an animal user anyway for the Viridescent Venera resistant shred. So you don't really need the fourth constellation. You have enough resistant shred already built in. And together with Shangling or any other pyro user, you can make Ayaka's auto attacks melt. It's reverse melt, it's a little bit weaker, but it's still melt. Put Sucrose in Ayaka's team and you don't need this fourth constellation. Then the fifth constellation is again a stat increase of her talent and the sixth constellation is really lackluster. It's maybe the weakest constellation six I have ever seen. I mean I'm thankful for that because basically you only need constellation one to play her efficiently. Look, when you have Constellation 6, every 10 seconds your charged attack deals an additional 300% damage. Wow! I mean, compare this to any other Constellation 6 of any other 5-star character except, okay, Chi Chi. And this difference in Constellation power level is astounding and I'm thanking Mihoyu for that, that they don't hide an integral part of her kit behind Constellation 6. So if you like Ayaka and you saved up for a long time for her, then go for her. I give a green light, I give my approval, she will be a nice addition to your account. But if you don't want Ayaka for her character and you just want the best cryo DPS that there is in this game, then I advise you to wait for the Ganyu rerun. 
this is why I am not summoning on Ayaka myself as well. You know, Ayaka is great, she will do tons of damage, but she will never, under any circumstances, beat this girl right here. Ganyu is a DPS character herself, but she is much more versatile, she does her whole damage from range and she will always do more consistent damage than Ayaka. Ganyu is from another world. And between us, I personally think that Mihoyu will never again create 5 star characters on the power level of Song Li, Ganyu and Hu Tao. I am sure that in Mihoyo's hindsight, those three characters were power level mistakes. I mean, look at it. After the release of Hu Tao, every other 5 star character was significantly weaker than everything that came before. Yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest because I don't want you to falsely summon for Ayaka when you are in search for the best cryo DPS, which is Ganyu. And I'm so happy that there is finally a newly released character that I can talk positively about. Yeah, I talked bad about Klee, I talked bad about Kazuha, and finally there is Ayaka, which I can recommend to people. So I'm not this negative dude all the time. So I hope you learned something and that I helped you in your summoning decisions. And as always, I hope that we see each other in my other videos. Bye.